Hello, welcome to Tabletop CP. Tonight we return to France and resume the Abbeville 1940 campaign. So quickly recapping the campaign to date. Uh, on June 4th, the 51st Highland Division, their attempt to reduce the German bridgehead were quite successful and they won two of the three battles. So they're going to delay the German attack by two turns uh, starting on June 5th, which is today. The Germans must encircle the 153rd Brigade of the 51st Highland Division at Fran Lau by controlling Table 4 by turn 6. Uh, since they were delayed two turns, they're going to be starting the campaign on turn 3. So four maps, you got to win it by turn six, you're starting on three, so pretty much there's no way the Germans can get a major victory out of this. Their only hope is to win every battle straight out all the way through the ladder and get a minor victory by turn seven. The forces we will see are again the British 51st Highland Division. They're a 1940 platoon with a force rating of minus one. Uh, they're, they're only going to get one platoon for the, the entire ladder. Uh, they can pull from the Armored Division support, they can pull from the Chassars Portis platoon from the French side as reliable allies, or they can pull any other French unit as unreliable allies. Uh, the Germans are going to be bringing in a uh, platoon, a motorized infantry platoon at plus one force rating from the 5th Motorized Infantry Regiment of the 2nd Infantry Division. The Germans will be getting two platoons and they can only switch platoons once during the campaign. Uh, they can pull support from their own motorized uh, infantry platoon list or they can pull support from any other German list for one extra support point. Tonight's battle is Table 1, Blitzkrieg is 02. So the Germans are going to be getting 12 support points. The BEF will be getting 6 support points, plus 2 for the force rating difference. And each time this battle is refought, the Germans will get plus 4 extra support. So mission-wise, the Germans will be starting along their edge with three patrol markers in a stack and the British are going to be able to deploy up to about a third of the table with four patrol markers and they have to at least be within 12 inches of each other. And the attackers will get up to three free moves and the higher force morale will take the first move in the patrol phase proper. The German objective is to exit two of their units off of the British table edge. Now the British are going to have a hard time getting support units on. They're going to have to play two full chain of command dice before they can even bring in any of their support. And to hinder them even further, the Germans are allowed to spend one of their full chain of command dice to reduce the British chain of command points by three. So that is the objective uh, and the briefing. Uh, terrain wise, same thing as usual. The hedges are thin and scraggly, so they are soft cover, but there's, they do not block line of sight. Now we have one large forest here with a small clearing here with some buildings. All the buildings are going to be hard cover. We have another patch of forest here. The rest is all open ground. So pretty straightforward on the terrain. Uh, let's go take a look at the forces. We begin with the defending British force. This is a platoon from the 153rd Brigade of the 51st Highland Division. So in command we have Lieutenant Malcolm MacDonald. 20 years old from Glasgow, an average sort, unremarkable. He went to a minor public school and thanks to the war he went straight into khaki. With him is his piper, Biff Robertson. Platoon Sergeant, Robert Big Bobby McDuff, 27 years old from Sterling, an intellectual looking man of average height. Before the war he was a juggler in a circus. Yeah, so um, the rest of the platoon, three sections. Each section consists of one corporal with rifle, seven man rifle team, three man Bren team. We also have one empty boys AT rifle. So I took one man from these two rifle teams to man the AT rifle. And of course we have the two inch mortar. So this is the platoon that I will be using for the rest of the campaign so I'm going to have to be careful with them. I don't want to burn them out too quickly and give the Germans too easy of a time. Um, at the back end of the ladder so there might be some early withdrawals or maybe not so we'll see but let's go take a look at the German force on this side we have the attacking German platoon 
This is a platoon from the 5th Motorized Infantry Regiment of the 2nd Infantry Division. So Andre will be getting two platoons for this campaign. This is the first platoon. So we start out we have Lieutenant Heinz Kramer, 19 years old, an average looking man. He was a doctor of engineering, not a natural leader and no interest in politics, but he does his best for the fatherland. He is from Berlin. Assisting him is Sergeant, Platoon Sergeant Dieter Kohl, 21 years old from Aachen. He's a rural farm boy. He left the Hitler Youth to join the army, a model citizen of the new Germany. And he is tall and thin. So Andre will be starting out with 1st Platoon and he'll run them until they can run no more and then he can bring in 2nd Platoon. And that is the forces. So uh, once Andre gets here we'll, we'll go through all the uh, normal pregame stuff and we'll get started. Uh, before we start I need to uh, clarify the rules a little bit. I was talking to my buddy Scott, uh, chatting with him online about this game just right now. And I had realized, or he realized, that I had the rules wrong. So I had said that uh, I needed two full chain of command dice to bring in my support. That's not the case. The two full chain of command dice I accumulate uh, represent the rest of my battalion arriving in force and making these, this area impassable to the Germans. So essentially when I get two full chain of command dice, the game ends. So that's why in the rules it mentions speed is of the essence for the Germans because they need to get off the board before I can get those two chain of command dice and have the cavalry show up. So I will be able to place my support as normal and fight normally, um, but keeping the track of those chain of command points is going to be important. And that is why Andre, as the Germans, will also be able to burn a chain of command dice to reduce my chain of command points by three to keep keep me from uh, bringing in the rest of my battalion and ending the game. So I uh, just wanted to get that straight. Uh, it's poorly worded in the rules. It doesn't really say that outright, but uh, after some looking through the forum and just talking with Scott, um, that does seem to be uh, what the rules are. So that's the way we're going to play it. And uh, I just wanted to clarify that because I would hate to play this entire game um, using the wrong rules. So. Thanks, Scott, for uh, sorting me out on that, and now we'll get started. All right, Andre's here now. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll for force morale, and then we'll do the uh, uh, patrol phase. So come on. Yes, so I'm at a 10. You're at a 9. We will now do the patrol phase. So, the British, we wound up with one here, jump off point here, and I have one inside this little shed there, and Andre wound up with uh, one there, one behind that hedge, and one over there on the edge. So that is it for the patrol phase, we both picked our support already, so now we'll do our plans. Alright, so the British plan, 51st Highland Division. So I've had, I got eight support points, six plus two for the force rating difference. So what I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring a French uh, one pounder from the Chasseurs Portis platoon as reliable allies. I'm also gonna bring an entrenchment for that one pounder, so that's four points. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the one pounder over here in an entrenchment, I'm gonna cover all that area. So he's gonna have to come in, if he brings vehicles, which he probably will, around the road, at least I'll be able to cover it with the um, one, one, or I'm sorry, 25 millimeter in the terms of the French. It's called a one pounder in the British Army, but it is a French, so it is going to be a 25 millimeter. I'm also going to bring a minefield. Uh, his objective is to get off the board, so I want to block this road. So I'm actually going to put a minefield just kind of in this area here. And I'm bringing two other entrenchments to house one of my sections, and I'll probably put them over here. Uh, to help spread hits and support the 25 millimeter, and I'm also bringing anti-aircraft machine guns, just in case he brings a Stuka. So I'm going to have one squad and the 25 pounder off this jump-off point, 
And then the rest of my squads I'm going to have kind of in this area. I might move up into the woods. There's 12 inch visibility when we're in the woods. So I might just move up and set up positions, a blocking position here. Or possibly inside the buildings. This is really the only building I can shoot out of. I guess I could shoot out of these, but um, definitely not this one. But So I'll probably wind up in the woods, but possibly I'll wind up farther back in the uh, buildings. I'm not sure yet. Just That uh, all depends on how Andre, uh, what he brings and how it plays out. The only thing I'm certain of is putting the 25 or the 25 millimeter in one squad over here. The rest of them is going to kind of play by ear and pray that I roll a lot of fives to end the turns or end the game uh, once I get the two chain command dice. So uh, simple plan, sit and wait. I uh, probably will deploy my guys here um, early so I can start putting pressure on them and make them think about bringing tanks in. And that is it for the British plan. I will let the Germans uh, tell you what they're going to do. The German plan. Well, pretty straightforward. We are trying to get off that end of the board. The uh, bummer part is I wasn't able to get uh, a jump off point beyond uh, about a third of the way up. Travis has them all along his end and he's got cover down there. So I'm thinking that I'm uh, gonna try and rush a couple of vehicles up along this side here and hopefully get fairly well down there before Travis uh, gets too far. I'm uh, going to try and cover them with uh, another team coming up the side and basically we're just going all out. I've got a uh, armored car that will hopefully uh, help kind of pound out uh, the resistance back there in the woods and Overall, it's pretty much, um, I'm hoping to just move up quickly before Travis uh, gets his breath uh, back after the Stuka bombardment. So I've got a red die, a Stuka bombardment, and an armored car, and uh, we're just uh, in an adjunct. I'm going to try and get both my uh, leaders out there rallying the boys and uh, moving everything forward. So. Um, we're probably going to take a lot of casualties if Travis can get some stuff on the board quickly. If he struggles at all, um, we could get up there and make a decent push. We'll see what happens. Plan's complete. So I do have uh, one minefield that I placed there to stop him rushing the road. And we will begin with the... Um, actually, we need to start with these. He does have a Stuka bombardment. So we need to start with these buildings. So roll... Uh, Let's just start rolling. So roll for this one here. And I do have AA machine guns, so I can ignore A5. So that's one five. I'll ignore that one. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. <laughs> so the Stuka misses the buildings. And the rest of the Stuka is going to be, when I start bringing my guys in, they're going to probably take some some shock. So well, uh, Andre does have a red dice. So we're going to go ahead and let Andre do the first phase of the game. Let me. Whoa. Well, the five don't count for the red. Oh, well, it's still a lot of fives. So, two. Two fives, a six, and, and a pair of deuces. <laughs> so, Andre brought in a squad here. Uh, could not put them in Overwatch since he rolled a two. And his other two, he brought in a squad in a truck. So, for one point, car, truck. We're just saying he can bring a squad in with the truck. So, he does have a truck with a squad there. Got a hell of a roll, like uh, what? 17. 17 inch move on that truck coming in. Yep. And that is it. So we'll just go right into the uh, British phase. I need a lot of fives here. <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> Three fives. Could you have gotten a better roll? Yeah, five fives. <laughs> Actually, five fives I might have been able to live with. And then a one and a three. So I've chosen not to do anything. Uh, I'm not going to risk the Stuka's wrath yet. Hopefully Andre rolls three sixes here and just Stuka flies off. Nope. Or just two more fives. And a one you can do nothing with. Except bring in a... Oh, you got a three. A three and a four. Forgot about the red dice. One, three, four. That... Uh... Alright, so with the four, he brought in uh, Platoon Sergeant Dieter Cole. 
to uh, command these guys to go on overwatch. Move the truck up 11 inches and then he also brought a fuel car for another point and inside the fuel car is the 5 centimeter mortar. And now I'll move to the British phase. Alright, here we go. Oh, another 5. <coughs> what are you at though? You're at 4, I'm at 4. So Wow. And uh, 1, 1, 3, 4. So I'm actually going to wait at least one more phase to spare myself the wrath of this dude because... What could possibly happen? Oh, great. Double phase. Hmm. Maybe I should have brought something in. And a bunch of threes. Maybe I should bring some stuff in. So the squad that was here advanced eight. He brought another squad in and put them on overwatch. And then the truck moved up about, what, seven? Six. Six inches. Big six inch. Oh, man, another double phase. Serious. Whoa. <clears throat> Damn. And my first uh, dice. So you could reduce me to, down to one right now if you wanted. I could. Or you could wait. All right. Tease or I could wait. <laughs> Are you calling me a tease, Travis? A little bit. <laughs> Not on camera. The boys are going to talk. <laughs> All right. Four and a two to work with, Andre. Sweet. So with the two, the truck moved. With the four, uh, Lieutenant Cole moved. These guys, everyone advanced and they got pretty far. So I'm definitely, definitely going to have to... Uh, to put oh. something now for sure. Two more fives. What? Good thing that's not me. The game would be half over. Um, more than half over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then, uh, he wound up with one, two, four. Move the car. So the car moved up at 14, 15? Uh, 14, I think. And then the truck also moved up, and then both of these squads were ordered up. So he's damn close to my jump off point, both of them really. But I do all get three a, of them actually. Yeah. Oh yeah, technically all three. <laughs> but I do get a phase now. I have no choice now, but I have to try to bring some in, assuming they come in. Two more fives. Nice. So that's one chain of command dice I'm at. Well, you know? both of us are rolling a lot of fives. And a three and a one. So I tried to bring a section in. They didn't make it. My boy's anti tank rifle, the one did make it. And he only took one shock from the Stuka. Actually, it's minus one because I have the machine guns. So actually, I didn't take any shock. I rolled the one on the D6, oh. and I have the A machine guns. Yep, yep. So I'm shooting at the truck. I need a five. So I hit it. <laughs> Nothing to All it. right, I got one success. So I need to roll. It'll probably be the one you drive flat out. Yeah, I mean, immediately drive flat out forwards. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess you'll just drive up to here and stop. So does it say, so flat out, so three dice? Yeah. Yep. 13. That's all it does. Drive flat out forward. Soft skin, zero, one success. Man, that sucked. <laughs> oh, man. It's not looking good. All right, Andre, it's your phase. Oh, jeez. Another double phase? Another double phase. Another chain of command dice. I should have ended the turn is what I should have did, just to get that stupid stupid out of there. <laughs> okay. Well, I could end it now, actually, as long as you don't win the game right now. <laughs> so, a four and a three. So, the squad moved up. Uh, they, he, uh, Sergeant Cole ordered them to move up. They got within four to shut that jump off point down. These guys got out at 3d6, only moved five. And I'm going to have to use my chain of command dice to do an ambush. So I'm going to bring in my Bren team in the hardcover, um, and we're going to fire at them. So I need some good hits here. Three hits. Perfectly average. And you got two teams there, Andre. Okay. How do you want them? Well, start with the machine gun, I guess. Two? Yep. Wait. <laughs> How many hits did I say I got? Three. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I... Okay, yeah. Two on the <laughs> <laughs> You're messing with me. One dead, all right. And then the rifles. Just one dead machine gun. So not a very effective ambush. Roll for your leader, though. Could be effective. No. <laughs> not effective. Not so much. I bet you got another phase. This is like the opposite of the last game where I was getting all the double phases, man. Well, um, it seemed like a good strategy, so I figured I'd try it. Very good strategy. <laughs> Another one. No, that uh, I already, I just had two, right? No, that was just the first one. You really? can do another one. So you could technically just run off the board right now. 
Um, well, maybe not. You can only move one squad off the board, probably, if you get lucky. So we'll let Andre decide what he wants to do. So they moved up, and all these guys are just going to rush the road. And he has yet another phase. So there's the three you wanted, and another five, and a fours, two fours and a three. All right, well, very quickly Andre's wound up on my side of the board, <laughs> <laughs> a lot quicker than I expected. So he did get within four, so that one shut down. Oh, he um, captured that one. Actually, I'm not sure about that. Actually, yes, I am within four. I knew I was within four of this guy. Oh, you're trying to assault. Okay, I see what you're saying. I thought you were talking about the jump off point. No. All right, so you're going to assault the boys. Okay, we'll have to count up the dice. So he gets 12, I get 5. So I just hope I do some damage here. All right, 5 against 12. So I got two of you. I got so more I'm than dead. two of you. So I killed two of you. Uh, one shock on you. And roll for your leader. No. So just two of you dead and two of me dead. And then you let one shock and then I have to roll a bad thing for team wiped out. Three. Minus one. So down to nine, so we're even. Cons so I could withdraw now. Consolidation. Four inch consolidation. I don't know. Can you consolidate into another combat or? Uh, I think we said you couldn't do that. Yeah, I don't remember. So I'm gonna stay more than four away from you. Okay. So he's moving up to the capture that one. And it'll be the British phase. I lost my boy's AT rifle, which is a two man team. So I'll probably be one killed for sure. Maybe one coming back. So is that it? That is all, right. All I can do. I need some threes. You need double sixes. Not a single three. I do need double sixes. <laughs> Actually, you do have a three. Yeah, one three. I'll see what I can do. All right, well, we've been beaten. I'm going to withdraw from the field. Um, deploying one, two, two teams. <laughs> <laughs> but the weird thing is, we're looking at the rules, and it's all about distance from the command, from the jump off point. There's no mention if there is no jump off point or a capture jump off point, what happens to you. Um, it only mentions like if you're 12, 24, if you can draw an unbroken line without six. I can't do any of that. So I don't know what happens. Do they just automatically get captured if they can't draw an unbroken line to a jump off point within, you know, that where they don't pass within six of an enemy? Are that they automatically captured? Harsh. So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to do. We're going to roll for them. So on a one or two, they're captured. On a three or four, they'll miss the next turn because they're running off this way and get lost and it's going to take a while to return to the unit. And a five or six, they make it and they'll just fall back to the line. So I guess they just are going to go this way. Uh, oh, I thought you were going to roll for each uh, man individually. No. Oh, okay. is it every... Oh, yeah, I guess I would, huh? So I'll roll two more. So... One's captured, one's dispersed, and one makes one it makes back. It. Okay, so that's two guys I'll be down. One's dead, or captured, Capture, so he's yeah. just out of the campaign permanently. One is going to be coming back next battle, or the battle after next, and then one's just going to return next battle. So we'll come back and we'll wrap it up. All right, so we're back to wrap it up. So uh, Malcolm McDonald's and his platoon, uh, his men's opinion is at zero. We're at minus one. Because we lost two men, but um, I can't remember now exactly. But we wound up at zero. We were minus one, and then we went back up plus one, so we're at zero. But the problem is our CO's opinion dropped two, so our CO's opinion is now at minus two. And our personal opinion is relaxed. We're still just relaxed. McDonald, we don't care. And uh, for Lieutenant Heinz Kramer, his men's opinion is at zero. His CO's opinion went up to plus one, and he's also relaxed. Uh, losses, so I'm going to be down four guys next battle. So I had one captured, one's lost in the woods trying to find his way back to his own lines, one guy's wounded, won't return to the next battle, and then one was killed in action. And the Germans lost one man 
killed in action. And that was it. So a thoroughly uh, dominating victory for the Germans. But like I told Andre, um, I, actually I'm a little upset that I lost so many guys. Because <laughs> in my head, in my head I was thinking, okay, the second any trouble starts at all, I'm pulling out. I don't want to suffer any casualties this early. I'll let you get deeper into the ladder and then I'll start putting up a stiffer resistance. Um, so by even losing four guys is, that's a lot. Um, even though they're not all dead, but I got one, two guys permanently gone and then two guys are going to miss the next game. So really is two killed in action, two missing the next game, but still, uh, that's not good. More than I wanted to lose. And the force rating, there was no difference in force rating. So no one, so you didn't get your guy back. We were both at nine. Um, so anyway. It was a good game, Andre. I mean, you had five double phases, and that really propelled you up the board. Well, big that, time. that was my uh, strategy. Well, that was your plan? My plan was Get five I'm going to haul ass down the uh, field here yeah. and roll better than Travis. Well, it, And I did both of those you things. carried it off to perfection. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when a plan comes together. I uh, Yeah, I should have tried to bring in stuff earlier, but... I mean, it's a, you can't anticipate the enemy getting five that double phases. That many double phases <laughs> is insane. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I thought, okay, I can wait at least a couple turns, let you get a little bit closer, and next thing I know, boom, you're right up on me. And Well, you had the one bummer roll where uh, all you brought in was the boys, and he didn't, uh, he he didn't, didn't connect. He didn't deliver. All he did was move you further up the table. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things. All right, I finally got a hit. Uh, oh, by the way, that hit you got? Yeah, he's going to drive flat out straight forward towards you. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, look at all these Germans. They're going to make it off the board any second, and I just withdrew. So, yeah, it's a clear victory for the Germans. Um, I was prepared to give this map up anyway, and I, like I said, I lost more guys than I wanted. Didn't expect those guys to get captured. Um, if anyone who's watching happens to know what happens to a team that has no jump off point, or jump off points captured, um, what happens to them? We kind of just made it up that it was similar to what they were, if they were pinned, what would happen? It, it seems a little, you know, initially it was like, well, they're just destroyed, but that that's just too harsh for a unit that didn't have any pins and, um, you know, yeah. why would they just be destroyed? Um, so I think that was a real good uh, compromise and yeah, it simulates what uh, what realistically you'd expect. Yeah, it doesn't say. It doesn't say what happens to you if you have no jump off point at all. Um, so yeah, but if anyone has an answer, you know, let us know. So that was a bad game for the British, um, but a much needed win for Andre. Well, yes, <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, as much as I like decisive victories, it would have been nice to have done a little more damage, but, uh, you know, it, uh, it came across uh, so fast, uh, you just never, by the time you could put stuff out, it was too late. Yeah, I should have started trying to bring stuff in when you were about right here. But, I mean, like I said, who know, you never know if your opponent's going to roll a bunch of double phases, so. And I had the one dice, what was I going to do? All I could do is ambush with it, and... And that's only a team. I don't have a team that really can lay down the smack at all, that, except the Bren team. Yeah, <laughs> when you when you pulled that ambush, I'm thinking, oh man, this is gonna hurt. And then it's like, oh, it's just a team. Yeah, uh, yeah, I can't ambush a whole squad. It's I not, wish. It's not like it's a, a Russian team. Now, if I had a flamethrower and ambushed that, that would have been something. <laughs> Actually, that's why I cringe when you say ambush. I'm oh, used yeah. to you ambushing with your flamethrower. Yeah, well, if I could have brought one, I would have. But we don't have one. The British don't have a flamethrower. Well, and this was so quick and decisive. I've actually got a full die, four oh, yeah. points on the next one, and I just, it's like, well. Never even used it. Yeah, you know, it, you it had would no, just been a waste to have. Uh, <laughs> you could have ambushed, or you could have interrupted and ran someone off the board. <laughs> I actually thought about running a group back over to the uh, jump oh. off point that I uh, left. Uh, standing but yeah that was the thing he uh, he forgot that you actually had to touch the jump off point to capture it he got within four but then ran off 
And that was kind of like in my head, it's like, oh, I got a little opening here because he's going to turn his back and I could, if I get some rolls, but that last roll I rolled so crappy, it's like, if I would have rolled a bunch of threes, I would have probably brought in a bunch of squads or tried to. And I might have tried to have a, I don't know if I had a slug fist or not there. You, um, you would have been better off just running off the board. <laughs> well, I did still have my armored car too, though. That's true. He had a 2 2 2 in, re in reserve that he never even brought in. So anyway, yeah, it was a, definitely a quick game. Probably, I don't know. That's probably the quickest game we've ever had. Maybe in terms of phases. Faster than the last game where I just had the tanks just run up and grab. Actually, <laughs> Actually I think that game took longer than this one. Because I literally only deployed a boys and one Bren team. <laughs> yeah, that one I actually... You did You did bring some stuff in. And I, there was an actual... I had some... There was a glimmer of hope off in the distance there for a little <laughs> bit that you just squashed out with a <laughs> thousand ton brick. So this is officially our fastest game ever of Chain of Command. So, congratulations, Andre. Yay, me! So that's it for this one. So, uh, as usual, check out the Facebook group. Uh, check out the Patreon page. If you want to become a patron and uh, help the channel out, maybe get some cool goodies, uh, tabletop CP stuff. And, uh, yeah, I guess that'll do it. So next week, or I don't know if we'll do sharp practice again next week, or or what we're going to do next week, but what are you doing Sunday? Are you around Sunday night? Like this weekend? Yeah. Uh, I believe I am. Okay, maybe we can get something in Sunday. Anyway, so Lieutenant Heinz Kramer and his first platoon have definitely punched through the front line here. And we're on, on a roll. roll. Moving on to the next objective. He's on a roll. He's won one in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Hey, it's a new record. <laughs> All right, so that's it for this one. We'll see you next time. So as a quick addendum, um, we were just talking, Andre and I, Andre never fired a single shot in this entire game. And I still lost, well didn't lose, but I'll still be down four men on the next one. All he did was assault the boys and then I did the rest. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the first game, well definitely the first game that the winners never fired a shot. Yeah. But the first game in which one of the sides has never fired a shot at all for yeah. both. Let, yeah, let alone won the game yeah winning a game without firing a shot that's well i don't know that's something man i don't it know is. if that's how many times that ever happens but well and it's and happened not, tonight <laughs> not not trying to be a uh a, a jerk here but uh i i do have to say i think travis is my mvp me yeah why for not deploying for yeah <laughs> for not deploying uh out of the gate um yeah i mean you know, when you skip the first uh, turn, I thought, wow, that's kind of ballsy. You skip the second turn, and I thought, all righty then. Well, like I said. And then I started pulling the double phases, and you didn't have a choice. You but, can't plan for those. Um, but I was planning on, I was going to start deploying when you got to about here. Yeah, but by the time that that came and went, you were up here, and then, yeah, that was it. Yeah, so. I thought I was going to be taking uh, fire all the way up. I didn't think it was going to necessarily slow me down or stop me right away, but. And I even said that in my plan, I'm going to deploy early. <laughs> and I just didn't. So, well, whatever. But anyway, I thought I would mention that because it's interesting that the winner never fired a shot. I mean, it's interesting that someone can go a whole game without firing a shot, period. Yeah. But to go a whole game without firing a shot and win, that's very unusual. So, anyway. It was a, it was a bizarre game on a lot of aspects. And, and I have a feeling we're going to see the Stuka again <laughs> i'm uh how much is it uh four points four points so it's well i mean it's kind of like the pre-game barrage is two so if you're doing the pre-game barrage anyway do you want to spend another two points um to put uh, pins on stuff as it comes in oh it's no brainer yeah but it's too powerful it probably should be more like six points well, the trick is, um, or five points. You know, when you know it's probably going to be there, you just gotta beef up the uh, AA. Yeah, AA uh, anti-aircraft artillery possibly next time for me. But this is where the head game comes in. Now I'll spend all that. And next thing you know, Andre, I want you to bring the Stuka next time. But that's part of the game, uh, kind of psychological warfare of, of chain of command. It's especially psych out stuff. 
in these uh, scenarios where you're going back and forth. Yeah. That's what I love about the campaigns, though. I mean, even this little battle, how, I mean, how kind of lame and inconsequential it seems on its own, it plays into a larger, you know, story that's going on. So, but like the last video, like I said, it was so crappy. <laughs> I would have never put that on the channel, but it's part of the campaign. Well, this game's the same way. Same it's like, way. Same, he wants same. to see this battle, but yeah. it, it does continue the story as part of the campaign, so... So thanks for hanging in there if you're watching this. Yeah. We apologize. <laughs> and we, we do promise we will uh, play a, another game uh, at some point where uh, yeah. it's not just a uh, complete blowout. Yeah, I guess the last two games have been pretty bad. One blowout my way, one blowout your way. But that's the way it goes. That's the pint-sized campaign for you. So anyway, uh, that's it for the addendum. So we'll see you next time.